Ghostbusters! How you doing, Drake? Yeah, so, uh, the other day I got myself one of those scented candles, a little out of season, but, uh, spiced gingerbread cookie with notes of nutmeg and clove. And it smells nice. Oh yeah. Uh, so I was looking at all the the four star. I was looking at a list of the four star servants that I have from uh, from Fate Grand Order. And from what I see, it doesn't include anything uh, from the third or fourth Lost Belts. But I have uh, all but three. Actually, wait, no, it does include the. No, it doesn't. Never mind. But yeah, apparently I have all but three of the of the um, four star servants uh, pre Lost Belt three and four. Those three are Lancer, Artoria, Alter, Nursery Rhyme, and Gorgon. I've got all the other four stars. <laughs> That's a little insane. Anyway. Uh... Let us go ahead and boop. Okay, and we're going to go ahead with this. Oh, this game was made by Axis. Never knew about that. I do want them to make, like, a legit one-on-one -on -one, uh, fighting game in the style of the recent Axis games, like Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, uh, Guilty Gear, Strive and Exerd, uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. mean to close that, but okay. Uh, boop. This is completely new to me. I've downloaded the ROM, and I have not played it, so I don't know if there are any graphical glitches. I don't know if there are any, like, other things that I need to worry about, so let's go. Uh, this mode is for those who are new to the RPG genre, 
This mode is for those who wish to fully enjoy the experience. Let's go with normal. Word of advice. There are a number of dead ends and potentially fatal choices in this game. Ah, I didn't see. It's a bright, sunny morning. The air is filled with the joyful laughter of students. There's more activity than normal in front of the school gate. A crowd is forming as students are being called over. I wonder what's going on. When I peer into the center of the hubbub, I see my friend and student council president, Issei Ryudo. Good morning. Lovely weather we're having, don't you think? Hmm? Huh? Why do you look so surprised? We announced at last week's assembly that this month the student council would strictly enforce school rules. I've been tasked with performing inspections to ensure students are in compliance with school rules. Now it goes without saying that everyone is subject to inspections, even old friends. Now then, uniform inspection time. Collar check. Pant hems, check. And your socks, check. Next is the contents of your bag. Notebooks, textbooks, pencil box. Not even a whiff of contraband. Your nails are evenly cut. And your haircut is sensible. Indeed, quite remarkable. You're a model Tsukumihara Academy student. Someone like you ought to consider a future in student government. You'd be perfect for it. Oh, but I'd never try to coerce you into joining the student council. We aren't like that. Now then, off to your classroom. Enjoy your day. Before I can reply, Mr. Diligent Student Council President is on to the next student's inspection. And eh, suddenly I can't read. Inspection. Hungry for gossip on the way to their classrooms, the students jabber about the inspections. Things are always so gently bustling in the morning. Another peaceful beginning to another peaceful day. Okay. So it looks like we're getting some Persona series vibes here. Welcome and enjoy your stay at Tsukumihara Academy. I just wanted to try saying that once, just to see how corny it would sound. If you continue right, you'll find the archery range, but you should head for the school building now. Your classroom's on the second floor, right? If you don't get to your classroom soon, you'll incite Tiger's Wrath. <laughs> I'd never try to coerce you into joining the student council. Calling it now, he's going to try to coerce you into joining at some point. <laughs> uh. I have this weird feeling that I'm forgetting something. I just can't think of what it might be. And I must have a hole in my head. Maybe if I head back to my classroom. Oh? Isn't the archery range open? What is this archery range you speak of? Oh, that building over there to the right. What about it? Well, somebody left their stuff there, but whatever. Looks like an ordinary school to me. Oh man, I gotta go to the bathroom before homeroom starts. My eyes are starting to float. We better head to the classroom. Our classroom? 2A ring a bell? 2A. Chimes raise curtains on humble days, precious as a handful of gold dust. As I enter class, I see Mato with a bunch of girls. Why he's so popular is a mystery. Hey, when did you show up? You're so quiet and dull that I didn't even notice you. Even though we've... Hey, we've been friends since our freshman year, right? Anyway... Don't sweat the fact that you're boring as dirt. It's not like you can help it. I mean, anyone would seem boring and stupid when compared to me. 
I don't like this guy. It's a little early for so much abuse, but as it's Shinji Mato, it can't be helped. His arrogance is almost palatable. I don't know what he's saying, but it makes all the girls squeal with joy. Actually, let me rephrase. His popularity isn't so much mysterious as it is unnatural. I was just doing a little math tutoring. This stuff is beyond easy. For me, anyway. Wait a sec. Hey, Mato, isn't the answer to this question totally wrong in every way? <laughs> what the? I'm the one who solved that. There's no way it could be wrong. But look at this. Since when did 2 plus 2 equal 5? Has somebody been reading 1984? I'd never make such a stupid mistake. It's all your fault. You're the idiots here, not me. As Shinji rages his voice, the girls all panic and run back to their desks. Ugh. I hate dealing with the proletariat. Especially when they think they're my equal. Yeah, he's definitely been reading 1984. It's really pathetic that these worms don't know their place. That's why I like you so much. Even though you're boring, you know not to steal my thunder. You're the ultimate sidekick. Shinji flashes me a smile. It's weird how I never take offense at the way he talks to me. By some strange twist of fate, Shinji Mato and I are friends. How we became friends was... I can't quite remember how it happened. I want to say we met in spring sometime. The bell for class rings as I try to recollect. And who should fly through the door but our homeroom teacher, Miss Fujimura. Whew, I made it. Good morning, every... That pose. <laughs> I'm sorry. That face. That was such a good face. And thud. Miss Fujimura trips, falling painfully onto the floor. As she lands, her head strikes the corner of the platform at the front of the classroom. Classroom goes dead silent. Every student's attention is focused on the same thing. Again? How does she manage to trip in the same place every time? Listen, you, this isn't the time to be making stupid jokes. You're right. She isn't moving. Did she get knocked out or something? Uh, she is twitching a little. <laughs> She's not quite dead yet. She's getting better. A few brave students get out of their seats and crowd around the still comatose Fujimura. Hey, Miss Fujimura? Miss Fujimura? Uh, are you okay? Uh, what? Huh? What's wrong, everyone? Hey, class is about to start, so get back to your seats. Pronto! Miss Fujimura jumps to her feet as if nothing had happened. It's almost as if the memory of her sudden and violent trip to the floor was totally erased. As this happens all the time, no one seems to notice or care enough to say anything. No one gives a thought to how odd it is for this to happen every single day. That's a cool transition. The scene playing out before me seems to never change from day to day. The same exact lessons, the exact same subject, the exact same content. Uh, today we're going to study the biography of Dr. Peaceman, a talented physician who... Taiga... I mean, Miss Fujimura is conducting class today with the same way she does every day. Uh, you may not know, but when I was young, an unknown pathogen was the cause of a serious epidemic. Topical. In fact, outbreaks were common, but now most illnesses are cured using nano thingamajigs. And FYI, I'm still young. This will be on the test, so be sure you don't forget it. I mean it. Her ensuing laughter stopped short at her eyes, which seemed deadly serious. 
just as everyone is about to call Fujimura out, the bell signaling the end of class rings. Alright, that's all for today. Be sure to study hard tonight, and don't forget those important points I told you about. While today's class wasn't all that boring, it is a relief when the bell rings. As the bell signaling the end of the day sounds, students begin to break off into small groups. Ugh, thank god that's over. I was getting sick of all the busy work. Being a student sucks. Worst part of the whole deal is having to attend these stupid classes. You're still here? Uh, that's unusual. You don't have any plans like a date or something? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I know you're too big of a nerd to ever get a date. Listen here, you little shit. You have no right to call me out like that. I mean, you're just going to your dork club, the journalism club, right? Well, seeing as you're as boring as stale white bread, your life is exactly as it should be. Okay, fuck you too, asshole. You know exactly what your role in life is, and you stay there. Well, catch you later. See you in class tomorrow. I really don't like that guy. I guess the journalism club's been busy. I mean, with all the weird stuff happening. Weird stuff? Recently, a lot of students have been getting hurt. Rumor is there's a slasher on campus. Hey, the editor-in-chief of the journalism club is calling a general meeting. You'd better go. Seems kind of pathetic to just head straight home after school. I should join a club. I hate wearing uniforms. I should have gone somewhere that lets you wear regular clothes. What? I'd kill to be able to wear the black uniform of the student council like you. The editor-in-chief of the news of the school newspaper is calling for you. You better go talk to her. It's a class 2B. There's a lot of athletes there, so it's a little overwhelming. It's noisy as usual. I'd rather not be noticed, so I better hightail it out of here. Class 2C. Student Council President Issei is in class C, but he's not here now. He must be busy. I don't know anyone else here. I should probably leave. Really wish I was dating Shinji's sister. She's that cute girl in the nurse's office. And we'd get married, and she'd feed me, and I'd wake up to her every day. Hee. <laughs> but the thought of Shinji being my brother-in-law is... Ugh, if only they weren't related. <laughs> if it's a slasher attacking the kids, then he's a bad slasher if they're all getting away alive. Jason is disappointed. To be fair, he's probably going more for terrorism than, like, actually killing anybody. Look who's here! It's the newspaper club's ace! Gotten any leads? What? Did you forget? You have to write an Unsolved Mysteries of Tsukimihara article. Come on, I told you yesterday! There isn't very much time left before the deadline. Well, whatever. Your work's always good, so I'll leave this in your capable hands. Jeez, my benevolence is like a black panther running around. Yes, that doesn't make sense. So that's that. I've done some of the investigating. It's your job to do the rest. Don't look so surprised. There is a method to my madness. Okay, so about the first preview edition, the one called Gateway to the Paranormal. So listen. There's supposedly an entrance to the spirit world at the rear of the archery range. One time, a male student who got bullied a lot was told to pick up trash there and vanished. Everyone's totally convinced that there's paranormal activity going on back there. Isn't that scary? I mean, ridiculous? Anyway, go sniff out the truth. Leave no stone unturned. 
Your nose and eyes are the tools of the trade for a journalist. Got it? This is really starting to sound like Persona. I'm definitely getting the vibe. Your reply should be, yes, ma'am. All right, hop to it. All right. It's so weird. I tried to go to the library before exams, but you can't get in. There are weird mechanical noises coming from inside. I'd check it out, but the door's locked. Oh, uh, that's the library as well. Huh. From the librarian, about exams. The library will be closed for the duration of exams. During the closure, the shelves will be reorganized and the much-requested PCs added. Stop by after your exams. This must have been uh, just around the time that the internet was picking up, so... Libraries didn't have uh, fancy computers to do research with yet. Oh yeah, I heard we got a new teacher. Hopefully they're nice and not a total control freak. Hey, Sakura! Oh, it's you, brother. I heard that you've been skipping out on the Archery Club's morning practices lately. Why haven't you been showing up? And where do you get off taking a break without my say-so? You... I get it now. You've been going to their house again, haven't you? Yes. I have been going there, but I just wanted to help and... Let me guess. You felt you were obligated to, right? Jeez, why must you be so damn naive? Mid-2000s? More like early 2000s. If I remember right, uh, the Fate series started around... 2001? Wait a sec. What was that just now? Anyway, if someone gets hurt, just leave them to suffer. Just do what I tell you to and things will be a-okay. I mean, it seems like people get some kind of perverse thrill from getting in my way. Force one of my, my dear little sister to miss valuable practice time. That's not how it was at all. I wasn't forced to do anything. I wanted to help. Why don't you... Why is it so wrong to help people who need it? <laughs> Isn't it only fools and the weak who manage to get themselves hurt somehow? And why help anybody out? Will that person ever pay you back or help in return? Of course they won't. And if you think otherwise, you're an idiot. I won't be used by anyone. It's better to treat others as cattle. And isn't it time for you to admit to feeling the same way? Wow, this guy's a scumbag. But, but for me, that option... Stop right there. I don't care what you have to say. Stop going to that house, Sakura. Got it? What a douche. Oh, uh, I mean, hi. Can I help you with anything? If you ever start feeling unwell, please come by the nurse's office. Out of the blue, a feeling that something was moving behind the door overcame me. As a rule, students aren't allowed inside of the supply room. It might just be a rat or something. For some unknown reason, I find my eyes drawn to the door of the supply room when... The door is suddenly and violently thrown open. What do you think you're doing? Without warning, a man appears from out of the shadows. Dressed in black with a dour expression, the person in question is very intimidating. But that sense of intimidation is immediately replaced with extreme discomfort and unease. A sudden, overwhelming sense of danger gives me goosebumps all over my body. His cold, blank stare sends chills down my spine. 
as though he's marking me for death. And for some reason, it feels as if he's deciding whether to break my neck or skin me alive. Odd. Your name doesn't appear to be on the list, but I had better make sure. He begins to mutter under his breath while at the same time he reaches out with his right hand. The chills running down my spine gain intensity as waves of nausea and vertigo wash over me. I feel like a rabbit watching the wolf draw near. Maybe this isn't just raw terror. I think he's holding something that's making me feel this way. You're not even trying to fight. My instincts aren't as sharp as I should be. I need to rest. The note of disgust in his voice is obvious as he slowly lowers his hand. The paralysis that seemed to take hold of me suddenly fades away. The man continues to look down on me with those dead eyes of his. Students are forbidden from entering the supply room. You'd do well to remember that. The campus is about to close. If you have nothing else to do, I advise you to go home now. Is there anything else? My name is Mr. Kuzuki. I'll be teaching here starting today. The man who introduces himself as Mr. Kuzuki turns and heads back into the supply room. With that, the final bell begins to chime signaling the end of the school day. Everything begins to progress as normal, as if nothing out of the ordinary had happened. But I'm still sore and slicked with sweat. An all-too-real reminder of what happened. Wonderful. We now have a teacher with obvious murderous intent teaching at our school. Ooh. Wasn't his name... Kuzuki? He seems not dangerous, but definitely merciless. Oh no. He felt dangerous. He, he, he gave an R of danger. An entrance to the spirit world? No clue. Maybe you should ask the archery club advisor, Fujimura. You want to know where Tiger is? Wouldn't she be at the archery range or something? And if I remember right, the archery range was over this way. Ah, you caught me in the middle of cleaning. Those archery club kids don't even unstring their bows. Ugh, the worst is when they leave their arrows stuck in the target mount. I usually make the kids do it, but there's no club activities leading up to exams, so I'm doing it. Huh? An entrance to the spirit world? That's just a rumor. It's not real. Exams are right around the corner, so don't waste your time on stuff like that. Go home. Shoot, shoot. What appears in the archery range isn't an entrance to the spirit world, but I... Uh, <clears throat> Miss Fujimura. Well, I can't say I'm surprised she's behind one of Tsukimu... Tsukumihara's mysteries. It's fitting. I'll report this tomorrow so I can go home now if I want. A day will pass by if you go home. Uh, if there's nothing else to do, then yeah, let's go home. Okay. Let's go. Humble days as precious as gold dust. Where are the buyers? I don't like the look of that. <laughs> as I walk into class, the girls that normally flock around Shinji Mato aren't there. Shinji seems to be in a bad mood today. His usual posse of girls is keeping their distance. I'll ask him if something happened. What? Like I'd tell you if anything happened to me. Which it didn't. Nothing happened at all. Hey, you know that Ice Queen Rin Tosaka? 
She thinks she's so much better than everyone else. At first I thought that she would be the only one who understood how lonely it is at the top. I tried talking to her yesterday, but I got nowhere. Maybe I just intimidate her or something. I might have lost a few points for getting violent, but the girls who talk back to me get slapped. Wow. So, physically violent, and the teachers don't do anything about it. Man, he's just a bully. <laughs> I never hook up with such a violent, stuck-up bitch like that, no matter how hot she is. What a waste. She'd be perfect if she'd just keep her mouth shut. You agree with me, right? Right? Ugh, man. How can anybody stand this guy? Looks like there's some tension between Shinji and Rin Tosaka. Knowing Shinji, he probably hit on her and got shot down. And why'd she take a shot at me? I thought she was going to spinning star kick me next. He continues to whine under his breath. I can only imagine how sleazy Shinji was being with her. Normally his super aggressive approach works, but obviously it didn't with Rin Tosaka. Life's more interesting when it's got little shakes up like shakeups like this. As if right on cue, Miss Fujimura barges into the classroom as the bell sounds. Whew, I made it. Good morning, everyone. Alright, no one's absent. And since there are no announcements, let's just start homeroom. There we go again. That face. As soon as she turns to reach for the chalk, she trips and falls as she always does. Money? Some kind of twisted charisma? Uh, I'm guessing the second. As she falls, her fingernails drag across the blackboard with a horrifying sound. Oh god! And thus, another typically mundane day begins anew. Oh man. People think the sound of nails on a chalkboard is horrible. I can't imagine the sensation of having your nails dragged across a chalkboard. That just makes it worse. <laughs> and though the Great War had finally come to an end, regional conflicts still persist. Despite the suffering of the previous generation, battles are still waged 30 years on. Standing behind the lectern today is the school's newest teacher, Kuzuki. Although he's supposed to be teaching math, his lesson seems to have gone off on a tangent. Now instead of armies, attacks in ever greater numbers are being carried out by terrorists. And in an attempt to suppress these terrorist groups, with that the bell signaling the end of the class it sounds. And with the end of the day here, the tension in the classroom drops immediately. All right, let us end here today. Oh, yes, before I forget, there is an announcement from the student counselor. Recently, a rise in the number of slashing incidents has made the surrounding area dangerous. With that in mind, keep any detours to a minimum and head home as quickly as possible. I'm getting Snape vibes. Get home quickly. Good advice, but I still have to finish a few assignments for the journalism club. Why I'm so gung-ho about investigating the school's seven wonders is a mystery even to me, but it seems important for some reason. I have to turn in yesterday's report. I better go to see the editor-in-chief this evening. The editor-in-chief was looking for you. She was going on about you being late with an article. You're investigating a story right now? Maybe I should join the journalism club too. Hey, guess what? I just passed this gorgeous girl on the stairs. Could she be a new student? What? I'm sure you're just talking about Rin Tosaka from Class B. Rin Tosaka? Never heard of her. You've really never heard of her? Pretty, athletic, smart, classy? Or a stuck-up Miss Perfect who all the guys adore and all the girls despise? 
Wouldn't be unrealistic to call Rin Tosaka the most popular girl in the whole school. Are you pulling my leg? Girl, you're so dense, you probably wouldn't feel it if I pulled your leg anyway. What? I'm not dense. Much. But she wasn't wearing her school uniform. She was wearing red. How do you explain that? I don't know. I hadn't noticed. Huh? Maybe I'm remembering wrong. You would. Come on, let's hurry to her club. Yeah. Uh. 2B, huh? Mr. Kuzuki? Everyone says he's scary, but he's actually a good teacher. Hey, guess what? I heard this from a friend of a friend, but... Huh? What is it? Miss Fujimura is living with one of the students here. Ew, you mean like romantically? That's taboo. There's probably more to that situation. Oh, our club days. Did you find out anything yesterday? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So it was Tiger. Of course there's no entrance to the spirit world. Thanks to you, the article will be great. Are you ready for the next article assignment? The next unsolved mystery is... Yesterday, there was a girl dressed in red on the rooftop. Rumors about Little Red Rooftop are spreading. Go find out what this is all about. A journalist lets the news guide their feet to the rooftop. All right. The girl on the rooftop? Ah, her. She just happens to be up there right now. I saw her holding the key to the rooftop a moment ago. Did you hear? There was a murder near the school yesterday. A high school kid was killed. It happened on their way home. I live near there and now I'm scared to go home. Hold on. If I'm getting Persona vibes from this, can I? The boys' bathroom. I don't really need to go right now. Damn it! I turn the doorknob and the metal door opens silently on its hinges. As a rule, no one is allowed up on the roof, but I can see someone's elongated shadow. The vibrant colors set off by the setting of the sun is enough to take one's breath away. Under the now blood-red sky, a single girl looks out onto the town that spreads out below. Like a figure out of a painting, the girl seems to shine with the same red glow as the setting sun. Ah, what a beautiful sunset. Oh. Yeah, I know. It's quite the view. I can only imagine how captivating this sight must be for the people who live here. It is indeed a very beautiful scene. Shame that it doesn't really exist. On the surface, it seems like such a benign, peaceful world. Pity that it'll soon come to an end. This place is merely an idealized imitation of the real world. And one done in poor taste. I wonder if there's any value to a memory that can only be observed and then left behind. I'm not quite sure if that last statement was supposed to express disgust or disappointment. As she finishes speaking, a faint smile forms on the girl's lips as she slowly turns in my direction. Her unwavering gaze makes it seem like she can see things hidden to others. Her eyes seem to shine with an intensity that rivals that of the fiery red of the evening sky. What's this? A notice from the system? Thanks for bringing it to me. Huh? That's not it? That means you must be one of the generic n I mean, students. One of the irrelevant NPCs can get up here. I guess I'll have to find another place to hang out. 
Continuing to mumble quietly to herself, the girl quickly walks my way. Oh well, at least this is a good opportunity for me to look one of you over. Stand still, you. Unexpectedly, her finger reaches out and touches my cheek. Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Wait, what's this? Is this a warning from the system? Direct interference does break the rules, after all. Mumbling to herself, the girl disappears without a trace. It's like no one was ever there at all. She vanished? There or not, her form has been indelibly burned into my mind. Oh, you're still here. It's almost time to leave school, so you should prepare to go home. What's wrong? You look a little pale. The sound of Issei's voice pulls me back to reality. I must look completely dazed and confused. Maybe I'm tired, or... I'll talk with the editor-in-chief again tomorrow. In any case, I think the course of wisdom for now would be to do go home like Issei says. Sip of a drink. <laughs> Auspicious star, such dazzling light, it drowns even the chime of bells. One day remaining. Ooh, what's gonna happen? I enter the classroom. Once again, Shin Shinji Mato in the seat next to me. As a full house. I'm telling you, you don't have any talent. Give up before you look like a retard. Uh, yeah, I, I realized that was there. Yeah. So you know what he said to that? What? What? What did he say? <laughs> We're dying to know. Tell us. This wuss gets all boo-hoo when he says... I'll keep practicing until I get better. I can at least get better than you, who skips practice. Sorry, I have to laugh. Anybody knows that you can't practice your way into being a genius. If he wants to practice something, he should practice not sounding like a tool. Guy's not a total maggot. But he's still trash that needs to find a garbage can. <laughs> that moron. People aren't created equal. Even people who are born above average can never reach the same heights as the naturally gifted. He must be so talented if you don't need to practice, Mato. I feel bad for that kid. <laughs> can the slasher get this ass hat? There's always this one guy. This one guy in any horror movie, any slasher movie or whatever, that you want something bad to happen to. Like, there. There's always this one guy who is so irredeemable that you want him to get attacked. Trash can't help being trash. It should learn to stop dreaming and about being something better. The bell rings. In response, the gaggle of girls shuffle off to their own seats. While we wait for the teacher to arrive, I get caught up on what Shinji said for some reason. Whether or not Shinji has innate talent, I think it's pretty clear that I'm a nobody. Nobody with no goals. I mean, when I try to even think about the future, I get overwhelmed. As long as I keep plodding along, someday I'll reach my totally average future. Yay. That's what happens to everyone, right? Are there actually people who break the pattern? How? I have no idea. For me, today is just another ordinary day. Good morning, everyone. Suddenly, my heart accelerates, each beat painfully strong. It's as if my body's on high alert. I know it's not a reaction to Miss Fujimura. No. 
Well, kids, this is a little out of the blue, but today I want to introduce you to a new friend. It's him. That blonde boy is the one who's causing my body's fight-or-flight instincts to prickle. Go on, Leo. Introduce yourself. For what purpose? Huh? Well, Leo, you'll be attending school with these people, so I'm sure they'd like to know who you are. Ah, I see. These good people do not know my name yet. He steps forward, and then in a louder voice, he says, Everyone, my name is Leonardo Pistorio Harway. In time, I will be a name known to all the world, but for now, it is the name of your classmate. I'm pleased to meet you all. I hope we enjoy our time together. Classroom is silent. There aren't even any jabs at his eccentric manner of speaking or any coups over how pretty he is. Instead, the entire classroom is enthralled by his regal bearing, entranced even. Shinji's words come to mind. This is what it means to be on a different level. None of us plebes could ever hope to reach the level that this new kid lives on. It's not overextending to call his very existence transfixing. Like deer in headlights, we're immobilized by a presence far brighter than our own. His natural place is above us, looking down as our king. How did someone like him end up here? It must be a mistake. Uh, um... Anyway, everyone, please make Leo feel welcome. Then, Leo, if you would please take a seat. It looks like the third seat in the second row from the right is open. Will that be okay? Leo? Ah, you're addressing me. I see no reason to not allow you to call me Leo, as if it didn't feel awkward to hear from you. If you have the chance, I'd very much like for a delightful woman like you to visit my country. What? Jeez, don't, don't, don't joke with your teacher. To your seat, Leo. I won't smack you since, well, it was kind of flattering for you to say that. Of course. I appreciate your diplomacy, Miss Fujimura. Kiss ass. Then the boy gave the kind of easy smile that only kids can. That simple smile washes away the tension in the room and people even begin to smile themselves. I think he's not so much a king as a prince. He may be above us, but he also has natural charisma that draws us up to his level. However, it seems that there is at least one person in class whose mileage varies. I don't like him. Flirting with the teacher already? That arrogant little twerp. Shinji is clearly not happy. If you have any questions, ask anyone in the class or myself. But I mean, come to me first. There's no need to be shy. Yes, I understand. I'm pleased that I will be attending such a good school. Am I imagining things? Just for a second, I thought he shifted his attention toward me. Not toward anyone else, not even Shinji, who's still bad-mouthing Leo, but to me alone. Yeah, right, there's no way a practically otherworldly person like him would notice bland me. School day ended with nothing else of interest occurring. But that Leo... I can't shake the uneasiness he awoke in my heart. Feels like cogs somewhere have become misaligned. No, I'm just excited because for once something happened. Well, besides what happened yesterday. I should report yesterday's findings to the editor-in-chief.
Oh, our club's ace. Did you find out anything yesterday? What? Little red rooftop vanished before your eyes? If she disappeared, there isn't anything we can do about that. Nothing we can do? <laughs> What's with the editor-in-chief's reaction? It's not right. I thought she'd say something like, hey, don't scare me like that. Actually, the problematic part is how nonchalant she is that a person disappeared. Your next story will be Mystery of the Courtyard Chapel. The editor-in-chief keeps talking like nothing happened. She's already on to the next thing. Should I say something? Hey, did you know there's a chapel on campus even though this isn't a mission school? Seems the chapel has been here longer than the school. This is just rumor, but they say that it's haunted and magic rites are performed there. I'm sending you to investigate. The entrance to the courtyard is on the end of the right side of the first floor hallway. Alright, first floor hallway. That's strange, even for here. Oh, it's you again. I don't have time to play like you obviously do. Go play reporter or whatever it is friendless little geeks like you do instead of having a life. So we have a jackass. That pretty boy's a kiss ass. Are you going to the garden? Keep your guard up. It's almost too quiet there. Lately, I've been getting these crushing headaches at school. It's starting to freak me out. What the hell happened here? What? The man stands like a black stain, tainting the joyfully multicolored flower beds around him. It's the new teacher, Kuzuki. But the man standing in front of me isn't acting like a teacher by any stretch of the imagination. The sick malignancy of overbearing aggression fills the air. And then scattered around him are... Dead bodies? Of students? Why did you come in here? I'm certain I locked that door. I suppose I'll test you out. His thin lips hardly moved, but in the next instant... I'm bowled over as if struck by an invisible force. Chaotic thoughts bury my brain like endless grains of sand. What happened? Can I move my limbs? Seriously, what was that? Kuzuki hasn't moved. No one else is nearby. Who? Why? How? My thoughts whirl. My heart races. I see what you are now. It isn't you, I suppose. His voice was a quiet hiss, but I could hear everything he said. This man, with cold, inscrutable eyes, raises his palm toward me. When I come to, I collapsed in the garden. The garden is silent. There's not even a trace of Kuzuki or of the corpses that had been there. I'm uninjured, though my body aches from laying on the hard ground. The cold sweat that had covered me is gone too. Only the piercing pain in my head remains. Maybe it was just a bad dream. I gulp air and attempt to stand. The ground seems to move under my feet. I'm delusional. Of course the ground isn't moving. I'll give my report to the editor-in-chief tomorrow and just go home for today.
where is the belfry? In that moment, gentle days end. Days remaining, zero. When I enter the classroom this time, things are a bit different. Wow. Okay, then how do you solve this problem, Leo? In this case, you substitute this for this and divide everything by X. It's the same simple equation that you used earlier. Oh, you're right. Thank you, Leo. Unlike someone else, he helps out his classmates without displaying an ounce of condescension. And that someone is directing a nasty scowl toward the new kid. That bunch of brown-nosing idiots will suck up to anyone who's got bigger pea brains than theirs. <laughs> whatever. It's no skin off my back. People who are ugly inside are ugly outside, too. Seems that Shinji's gaggle of female admirers has migrated to Leo's desk. For once, Shinji's irritation is kind of understandable. I'll give him this. Brad is a real charity worker, laying on the charm for those sows. He's desperate to appear smarter than me, but I'm the real smart one here. I see what he's doing. That dumb little kid doesn't know what I'm on to him. Reacting to Shinji's voice, Leo glances this way. Leo's expression is inscrutable, but not hostile. Uh, uh, what do you want? You want to go? After a few false starts, Shinji finally manages to squeeze that out in a low voice. I don't know if Leo heard, but he gets out of his seat. The recoil turns into noticeable flinch, which Leo smiles kindly at in response. Unlike Shinji's, Leo's gestures are filled with dignity. If I have unknowingly given you cause to be malicious, I would like to deeply apologize. Shinji Mato, was it? I'll be careful not to upset you in the future. His message firmly delivered, Leo returns to his seat. His soft voice bore no note of hostility or resentment. I know it's hard to believe, but maybe Leo wasn't upset. <laughs> he knows when to bow down to true authority, it seems. <laughs> I'm such a nice guy, I'll just accept his apology. Yeah, it's not like he ever pissed me off. After visually confirming that Leo is otherwise occupied, Shinji feigns calmness and leans back. Or maybe he's being kind. Ever thought of that, Shinji? Whew, I made it. Good morning, every... Blah! And thud. Ugh, that sound makes me cringe no matter how many times I hear it. Everyone is desensitized to it for the most part. Even knowing that she'll jump to her feet in a few seconds, we should probably worry more. Shinji still seems to be in a bad mood. It's obvious that he doesn't like Leo at all that much. But with him, it's impossible to tell if he's really mad or just being cynical. Either way, it's just more of the same. Shinji lays back, his pants now home to the former contents of his stomach. <laughs> Just like our homeroom teacher's daily dramatic entrance, and once again, the day begins. Alrighty then, let's pick up where we left off. According to Dr. Peaceman's biography, During class, I thought I saw Leo smirk a little, but other than that, nothing exciting occurred. Today's just another boring day in a long string of boring days. Who here knows what amnesia is? It's a terrifying condition where an individual loses all of their memories. It's caused by brain damage, severe trauma, or even infections of one's mucous membranes. Didn't know about the mucous membranes part. The section of the doctor's biography we just covered touches on this condition. The cure for such a scary condition was discovered by Dr. Peaceman. 
With that said, using amnesia as an excuse for forgetting your homework isn't going to fly. When I was young, a fair number of my classmates were unscrupulous enough to try this. And before you get any ideas, I'm still young. In fact, I'm putting that fact on the test. As per the norm, Tiger's lecture starts to peter out. Just as a collective, this again starts to rise from the students. Miss Fujimura. Without being acknowledged by the teacher, Leo suddenly rises to his feet. The tension in the classroom ratchets up immediately as all eyes focus on Leo. The young boy surveys the room with a mysterious smile, taking in everyone's startled glances. Oh, and of course, my fellow classmates. It is time for me to leave. We will probably never meet again, so I wish you all well. That's... abrupt. What the... Uh, my head! The pain! Uh, and before I forget... Miss Fujimura, I think you are still young, even now. Just your presence is enough to remind me of the beauty of youth. You're a remarkable person. After what seemed to be a very slight bow, he immediately seems to disappear from the room. Um... Alright then, let's continue. Please turn to page 86. And accompanied by the sound of flipping pages, the lesson goes on as if nothing had happened. <sighs> Showing off like that in the middle of class. What a jackass. If you have to use the John, be a little more discreet. And that I have to leave crap. Seriously, isn't he supposed to be some kind of aristocrat or princeling or something? Of course, what just happened is impossible. A highly suspicious disappearance in the middle of class and the teacher doesn't seem to care. No one in class says anything and the class continues as if nothing strange has happened. It was the same dull, dreary scene as yesterday and the day before. This can't be natural. He ninja finished. After Leo's exit from class, the lesson continues unabated, as if following a set script. Strange. This is definitely strange. It's as if the world tilted slightly and everything within it is losing its sense of presence. My head feels like it's going to explode. Pain is making it hard to remember who I am. Wait, come to think of it. I mean, really, who am I? What is my name? How old am I? Where do I live? How many people are in my family? What was my life like before I started attending this school? I can't remember anything. My memory has been completely erased somehow. How and why did this happen? That's right. The editor-in-chief of the Journalism Club. As the president of the Journalism Club, she should at least know my name. I know I had to have filled out something when I first joined the club. I'll ask her. Hopefully she'll be in her normal spot. Okay. Man, where is everyone? It's like a ghost town around here. Things are getting weird. That Leo guy. Where in the heck did he go? I never thought he'd be the type to ditch class. Okay. A friendly little reminder from Miss Fujimura. Any student who gets a red mark in my class is invited to my special tutoring session. At the bottom of the flyer is a drawing of Miss Fujimura swinging a wooden sword. In no way will that be a normal tutoring session. I better not get any red marks. What's with Leo all of a sudden? But after seeing that, I've had enough of this. Oh, our club's ace. Did you find out anything yesterday? The editor-in-chief is her usual cheery self. All I can think about is the pile of dead bodies I witnessed. No, I have to ask about myself. I'll ask her what my name is. Huh? Your name? 
just look it up in the registry in the library. Yeah, the school registry. It has everyone's names. If I look at the school registry, it might jog my memories. I'll go to the library. It's really creepy that nobody really seems bothered or confused by anything. You want to see the registry of names? It's on the bookshelf in the library, I think. I found it. Tsukumihara Academy Student Registry. Once I read through this, I should be able to remember something about myself. I open the book and begin turning pages. Immediately I notice something's terribly wrong. The pages are blank. 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 Every single page was blank. I reach for last year's school registry. And when I start flipping through the pages... Blank. 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 What is happening here? Who am I? And just what is this place? Okay. There's something wrong with this place, but more worrying is the fact that I can't remember who I am. As I wander the campus, I see Leo walking down a hallway on the first floor. As a transfer student, I can't see why Leo would want to visit any of the freshmen. Also, there's nothing but a dead end up ahead. I wonder what Leo is really up to. I suddenly have this weird feeling that someone or something is up ahead in the, out in the hallway. who, for some reason, is examining the wall at the end of the hallway with an almost excessive interest. Hmm. The attention to detail is quite impressive. Even the surrounding air is surprisingly substantial. If that is the case, this world is in some ways more real than the real world it represents. But that's just my opinion. How about you guys? What are your thoughts on this? In that moment, it feels like my heart skips a beat. Almost immediately, my blood pressure skyrockets along with my body temperature. Ba-dum. 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 My pulse is like an explosion in my ears as my blood races through my veins. And the reason is clear. Now he, I mean Leo, has turned to face me. I now know for sure. He's talking to me as if there's nobody else present besides the two of us. Greetings. I believe this is the first time we've had an actual conversation. I don't feel any sense of hostility from Leo. In fact, his smile seems genuinely friendly. His smile has the same effect on me as the rising of the morning sun. Warm and comforting. In addition to his smile, his presence is inviting and inclusive, and I find myself drawn to him. Oddly, my worries have vanished. All I can think of is doing as he says, as that's the only way to... My mind feels like it's in a haze. It's like Leo's controlling my thoughts in some way. Attending school wasn't half bad. I've never had the opportunity to go to one before now. In that respect... This has been quite an interesting experience. However, the time for fun has come to an end. I did not come here to play at being a student. No matter how enjoyable the detour, eventually one must return to their appointed path. And for me, the time to do so has arrived. With those final words, Leo turns his back on me. Farewell. No, that's not quite right. I don't think farewell would be accurate in this situation. For reasons I cannot explain, I have the distinct feeling that we will see each other again. So I guess I should use the more congenial see you later. Well, it's time for me to move on. I wish you the best of luck.
with those final words, Leo disappears. It's like he ceases to exist. One moment his hand is on the wall, the next he's gone. The young man in front of me seems to disappear before my very eyes. I want to say reality rejected his existence in it, but it feels like it was the opposite. That he refused to be constrained by it. It wasn't any special ability that allowed him to do so, just his strength of will. With his departure, I feel as if a great weight is lifted from my very being. And rather than be a cause for concern, it brings a fundamental question to mind. Who am I? As the question pops into my head, it begins to take on a life of its own, searing my brain. I investigate the wall that Leo disappeared through. It's just a concrete wall at the end of the hallway. About the only thing on the floor is dust. But I'm positive there must be something here because Leo walked through the wall. It'd be so easy to turn around, go back down the hallway, and pretend nothing happened. But there are still things I need to know. I have no memories. That means I've never had anywhere else to go but here. No place to return to. What was it that Leo said? No matter how enjoyable the detour, eventually one must return to their appointed path. That's what he said, didn't he? Then beyond this wall lies the appointed path and the truth. If I follow him, I'll learn the answers to my questions, even if those answers are painful. But ignorance is bliss. Do I have the fortitude to face the truth and accept it? I want to know. Something's different. Down to the floors and the walls, the school changed the very substance of its being. For some reason, reality cracking this way is intensely disturbing. This world around me is more real than a painting, but not even as real as a sandcastle. I feel like it's so brittle I could tap it and the echo would shake this whole world. Where the boring concrete wall once stood, now there's a doorway that I can freely walk through. It's an entrance. No, an emergency exit, like stairs to the outside. It's not something of this world. I have no doubt that the world the door leads to is utterly alien. Whatever awaits inside, whatever shape it takes, there's a certain sort of finality to seeing it. Ultimately, I've already committed to this path. I bid farewell to the false world and take my first step along the appointed path. What the fuck? Beyond the door seems to be a dismal looking scrapyard. Out in front of me is the smooth skinned effigy. While trying to figure out exactly what to do with it. Welcome, potential master. A voice comes out of nowhere. That effigy with you is your sword and shield for what lies ahead. It will move in response to your commands. Now then, please proceed. The truth that you seek lies ahead. The motivations of the owner of that voice worry me, but it's obvious I won't learn anything by standing here. So there's no longer a path by which I can return. I have no choice but to head to the darkness with only this strange doll as protection. I made it. Within the deepest depths of the world beyond the door. This place must be the goal I'm supposed to reach. At least, that's what I thought. It's stifling. The aura of purity that seems to act as a ward against corrupted souls who try to enter. The feeling is familiar. It has the feeling of a chapel where the spirits of the deceased still linger. 
Oh gods, it's Kingdom Hearts now. This is every game. Yeah. At first I didn't notice, being overwhelmed by the grandeur of the room. But to one side is a young man in a familiar uniform, lying still on the ground. I call out to him, but there's no reply. I shake him in an attempt to wake him up when I notice he is stone cold. I go as pale as the corpse before me, and I can no longer think coherently. All I can do is stare in bewilderment. It is at this moment. The fallen effigy lying next to the male student comes to its feet with a clatter. Before I get a chance to make sense of what's going on, it suddenly twists around and comes right at me. I think this is completely automated, by the way. Hm. Huh. You seem to be lacking as well. I didn't stand a chance against that thing. Seems I wasn't qualified to be here. Me? Qualifications? That's right. I should know everything by now. The truth has to be here. But now... Everything's going dark. I'm not even really scared. The only feeling that remains in me is regret. Even at the very end, I was unable to remember anything about myself. Someone. Anyone. If you make it beyond here... Please don't forget my name. Did you just die? That fight was completely automated, so I have a feeling that was just like the prologue. And title drop! His story has ended, but what about yours? Before you write your own story, choose the vessel of your power. A woman who wields a sword boldly a stoic warrior clothed in red robes, and a magical fox girl. <sighs> we know what Clegg would choose. Yep, totally. Actually, no, Clegg would probably have a tough choice. Okay. Knowing who the characters are... I think I have an idea of the one I want, but... Uh... What about your guys' votes?
bold sword lady. John, you're here? Which one would you recommend? It's Umu, housewife, or foxwife. <laughs> All right. Could be Archer instead of Umu. He wears red too. Let's see. Okay, you know what? <clears throat> Let's do it this way. Uh, one, two, three. I am going on roll a die, and I'm going to roll one three-sided dice. And whichever result I get, that's the one I pick. Here we go. And the number is... One. So, the woman who wields a sword boldly. Saber. Standard. A young woman clothed in crimson raiment. With the mannerisms of man. This servant is best suited for novice players. Okay. And this is my first time playing it, so that actually is pretty good. Partner with this servant? Yeah. Oh. I always awaken very abruptly. I don't even think I dream. I suddenly find myself walking to school. My headache worsens day by day until it finally buzzes in my head like an alarm. That day, in potent numbness, I wake up twice as fast as normal. I walk to the schoolyard. It's clear and cloudless, 7.30 a.m. But what season is it? When I try to recall what season it is, I start to get so dizzy I almost pass out. I may wind up back in bed if I let go and faint. For some time, I've been embracing a rush of useless information. The normal stuff you'd see at a school, like the hustle and bustle of my classmates by the entrance. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. When I push the thought, my field of vision fizzles. Today. Again today. There's a crowd of students milling in front of the school gate, and more are being directed that way. As to what's going on, there's a boy in a black uniform in front of the school gate. He's my friend, as I recall. He's Issei Ryudo, as I recall. I remember this from the first time. When Issei notices me looking at him, he pushes through the crowd. Good morning! Lovely weather we're having, don't you think? Why do you look so surprised? We announced at last week's assembly that this month the student council would strictly enforce school rules. He runs through his spiel as if this was the first time he'd ever disclosed the information. I already know this. I know it. I already know what happens. It's happened more than once. I'm seized by a headache. I'm so dizzy I feel like I'm being forcibly logged out of my consciousness. First, let me check your student ID. I shouldn't need to remind you, but it should be on you at all times. My login ID is being checked. It's so obvious now. I'm starting to feel like we're kind of getting... bite-the-dusted. It's so obvious now. I answer clearly to the question that usually makes me go dizzy. Ah, so this is where we pick our uh, protagonist. Okay. 
Um, let's go with the mail. Here's the name entry. Okay. Uh Nope, 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 nope. Uh Nope, didn't want to do that. Uh it's square that's delete. Okay. Uh there we go. Okay. I'm guessing this probably wouldn't work because of the way Japanese names are, but let's roll with it. All right. Great. There's no telling when an emergency might cover, and it will be a help if you have your ID. I feel nauseous, and I know it has nothing to do with what I ate for breakfast this morning. I feel nauseous because of the world around me. It's repeating itself over and over, and that's making me sick. Yep. We bit the dust. Uh, now for the uniform inspection. Collar, check. Pant hams, check. And your socks, check. I want him to get out of my way. I want this repetition to stop. I push him aside and go forward. I'm not nice about it, either. Next is the contents of your bag. Notebooks, textbooks, pencil box, not even a whiff of contraband. Your nails are evenly cut, and your haircut is sensible. Indeed, quite remarkable. You're a muddled Tsukumi Hard Academy student. He keeps on talking loudly, even though he's facing no one. I have a headache. I'm shivering. I know one thing for sure. This is wrong. This is not the school I know. It can't be. I have to go. I have to hurry and wake up. Or else it will be too late. But who am I awakening for? My anxiety and headaches are only getting worse. Afternoon arrives while I desperately try to find a way to escape this bizarre situation. As is now the norm, my vision is overlaid with some kind of unnatural distortion. Uneasiness, futility, emptiness. I want someone to explain to me the true nature behind all of these feelings. There must be a key somewhere. Something that will have the answers to all my questions. Maybe if we headed down to where that door was? Yep, there's Leo. The moment I step foot on the first floor, my feelings of unease intensify. There's a student wearing red uniform. Leo, the new transfer student. The instant I lay eyes on him, I immediately feel intimidated and humiliated. There's also someone trailing behind him. It looks like one of my classmates. The more I think, the more I realize that Leo isn't the only anomaly I've come across while on campus. There are other things that seem off as well. It's becoming clearer now. There are people who shouldn't exist. Students that mysteriously vanish. The fabric of reality is coming unraveled. Don't turn away now. What is the truth? What defines the world you know? Don't turn away now. There's a reason why you're here. Come, do not allow yourself to close your eyes to the truth. Down this way. Leo and one of the guys from my class are talking in the hallway up ahead. The attention to detail is quite impressive. Even the surrounding air is surprisingly substantial. If that is the case, this world is in some ways more real than the real world it represents. How about you guys? What are your thoughts on this? 
you guys. For a moment it feels as if he's including me in his comment. However, Leo begins speaking to my classmate, seemingly oblivious to my presence. Greetings. I believe this is the first time we've had an actual conversation. Leo gives me a smile with no hostility. However, I have the suspicion that there's something malicious behind his smile. Attending school wasn't half bad. I've never had the opportunity to go on one before now. In that respect, this has been quite an interesting experience. However, the time for fun has come to an end. I did not come here to play at being a student. No matter how enjoyable the detour, eventually one must return to their appointed path. And for me, the time to do so has arrived. With those final words, Leo turns his back on me. Farewell. No, that's not quite right. I don't think farewell would be accurate in this situation. For reasons I cannot explain, I have the distinct feeling that we will see each other again. So I guess I should use the more congenial... See you later. Well, it's time for me to move on. I wish you the best of luck. Leo said as much, even going so far as to look in my direction. For some inexplicable reason. I'm not surprised that Leo knew I was spying on him. I'm trying to get things straightened out in my mind when Leo suddenly... disappears. The student who's following him also disappears after touching the same spot on the wall. At the same moment he vanishes, my vision distorts and the shock threatens to overwhelm me. What is going on here? I wonder if this place is the source of my unease. Like him, I place my hand on the wall, expecting to be drawn in. I see now that the way to the truth to why I have these feelings begins right here. I want to know. The atmosphere changes. There's a doorway, an entrance where the concrete wall used to be. It's not something of this world. There's no doubt this door leads to some place unfathomable. I bid farewell to the false world and take my first step towards the truth. I'm getting deja vu. An entrance to another world. Beyond this door, the previous statement perfectly describes the view before me. Walking behind me is my strange, silent attendant. It is to be my sword and shield for what lies ahead. A disembodied voice suddenly confirms my thoughts. Although I have yet to learn anything, I need to do something besides stand here. At the very least, there might be some clues to this bizarre experience up ahead. I have no choice but to head into the darkness with only this strange doll as protection. And suddenly I'm getting Tron vibes. Also, is it just me, or is more of this... Okay. I was going to say, is it just me, or is more of this road being shown as I progress? Like, is the draw distance getting further, but... Yeah, that might just be an optical illusion thing. Wow. This is actually pretty eerie. <laughs> no longer a typical school campus. The floors and walls, the air, even the aura are slightly off. 
wouldn't surprise me to see a monster pop out from the shadows. It's very much like a dungeon here. Welcome, potential master. With a shocking suddenness, a voice begins speaking. It sounds like it's coming from the empty sky above. If you are looking for answers, you must reach the goal. Now please, step forward. The illuminated cube in front of you is called an item folder. Inside of it is a farewell present of sorts for those about to face the coming trial. Touch it to open it. Obtained Ether Shard. Okay. Before you is an enemy program. It is programmed to attack on sight. Touching it will initiate a battle. But you won't actually fight as if you were too fragile. The effigy given to you will fight in your stead. If your effigy is ever destroyed in battle, you will no longer... Well, hold on. If your effigy is ever destroyed in battle, you will no longer be shielded from harm. To put it bluntly, you will die, so be very careful in battle. But there's no need to be afraid, for now. Just do what I say, and you'll be perfectly safe for the time being. First off, why don't I explain a little bit about battles? First of all, there are three basic commands that you can issue in battle. Attack, guard, and break. Each turn in battle is composed of six actions, and you'll need to tell your effigy what your strategy is to be. Okay. And it looks like it's a rock, paper, scissors system. All right. The enemy before you should be quite easy to defeat as it will only perform break. Break, which is focused solely on power, there shouldn't be much of a problem against attack. Now use the attack command to destroy the program. Okay. So this is our actual first fight. Okay. So, how did it go? One thing to know is that in each turn, you'll have to plan a series of six moves that will defeat your foe. The goal is still far ahead. If you must bask in the afterglow of your victory, do so while moving forward. You can overcome break by using the attack command. All right. Oh look, here comes another program. You seem nervous. Perhaps you're anxious about fighting in another battle? Do not be alarmed. That enemy isn't strong enough to harm you. It's programmed to only use attack. While attack is a is a potent action, using guard will allow you to defend and then counterattack. Guard can be used to reduce the damage caused by an enemy attack, but I trust you know this. Okay. Now that you know how this battle will unfold, use the appropriate command to defeat the enemy program. Okay, so we're guarding. Okay, that went all right. Yes, that's exactly right. As you may have already noticed, performing three successful actions in a row result in a chain. By performing multiple chain attacks, you can perform a devastating follow-up attack on your opponent. 
If you land three strikes in a row, you will perform an extra attack, which is a special additional attack. While doing multiple chain attacks in the heat of battle may be difficult, the results make it worth the effort. Now please proceed. Oh man, that looks creepy. That looks super creepy. You should be used to the fundamentals of battle at this point, but I'll walk you through this one last time. This program will only use guard and do nothing in battle but defend against harm. But no matter how stout one heh <laughs> suddenly I can't read again. But no matter how stout one's defense may be, it will be for naught against the break command. You can shatter the enemy's guard command by using break. Remember, always use the appropriate command for any given situation. You have been through three battles and have used the attack, guard, and break commands. Someone as intuitive and observant as you must have already noticed this. Each of the three attacks balances each other out, creating a situation where no attack is dominant. Three battle commands, attack, break, and guard all have immutable relationships with one another. What I've just covered is the absolute basics of battle and the minimum info you'll need to know. Once you master the basics, all that's left is to test yourself in battle and gain valuable experience. Now please, proceed. All of the enemy programs you've faced so far have only used one move, which won't happen in a real fight. Like you, your enemies will choose their actions based on the situation and general observation. Their actions will be very difficult for you to predict at first. As you face the same enemy multiple times, you'll begin you'll be able to read their tendencies and patterns accurately. When you first enter a battle, your opponent's moves will be mostly hidden from you. Being able to guess your opponent's moves with only a limited amount of info is the key to victory. Although considering your lack of fighting experience, I may be expecting far too much from you. But anyway, please try your best. All right, here we go. All uh, right, so break, break, or guard. Uh, I'm guessing it'll be break, break, guard, guard, attack, attack. Ooh. Okay. Break, break. And there we go. It's dead. Good job. All right, then. Please proceed to the final room. Interesting setup for a tutorial. Ooh. Yeah, that looks pretty final roomish. I made it. At the end of a very long road, after going through a door that suddenly appeared in the wall, the oppressive air of this place where the spirits of the dead still linger. Here's my goal. That's what I thought. Further in, it appears as if someone had collapsed. 
when I look into his face. It's the student who was following Leo just now. I call out to him, but get no reply. I shake him in an attempt to wake him up when I notice he is stone cold. I go as pale as the corpse before me, and I can no longer think coherently. All I can do is stare in bewilderment. It is at this moment... The fallen effigy lying next to the male student comes to its feet with a clatter. After having to fight several enemy programs to get here, it's obvious that this thing is an enemy as well. Without warning, it suddenly twists around and comes right at me. Hmm... I'm gonna make a save state here, just in case. Oh, that's bad, okay. Alright, um, let's uh, load that state. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, what the heck? Okay, so I guess I didn't make it. I, I'm. Is that game over, or was that supposed to happen? Huh. You seem to be lacking as well. I can hear the sound of a distant voice. The time has come. With your inevitable loss, I will consider this round of preliminaries to be over. Farewell. I pray you'll find peace in your annihilation. That is the voice's final words to me. I don't have the power to protest. All I can do is stare at the floor. I think I'm going to die here. Suddenly, at the edge of my now hazy vision, a number of brown-colored lumps seem to rise from the ground. Actually, it might be that I just noticed them now. They may have been there from the beginning, for all I know. Those lumps are the bodies of an untold number of fallen Tsukumihara Academy students. The guy before me wasn't the only one to fall. All of the others made it here and died, while unable to do anything. And in a very short while, I suppose I'll become one of them. Maybe I should just close my eyes now. I did all that I could, so maybe it'd be better for it to end now. I refuse to give up. I summon all of my strength in an attempt to get back on my feet. However, as I try to move, an unbearably intense pain shoots through my entire body. If that's how it's going to be... No. If this is... I still refuse to give up. I don't want it to end like this. I cannot ignore the intense pain coursing through my body. 
I've reached a point where I no longer see stars as my eyes feel like they're on fire. I feel like all five of my senses are being ripped from my body. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of the pain. I'm afraid of losing my senses. I'm afraid of becoming a corpse. And the most terrifying thing, disappearing without a trace for any reason at all. It's not right that I disappear here. My consciousness, shot through with waves of distortion, screams out against the injustice of it all. What was the purpose of suffering through those headaches just to fade away here and now? What were they all for if I just fade away here and now? I have to stand up. It's okay if I'm scared. It's okay if I'm in pain. I have to rise above all of that. Because I have yet to fight on my own volition and on my own terms. Indeed. You must embrace your fear of death and fight on regardless of what fate may await you. Well spoken, nameless traveler. Even if the world will never hear of your desire, know that I admire and respect it. Close your hands into fists and raise your head. Your end has yet to come. In fact, your destiny begins now. The sound of breaking glass is accompanied by a light cutting through the gloom. I manage to move my weary body and aching head to see what's happening. I didn't notice it before, but something was slowly rising up from the floor in the middle of the room. That form. Its appearance isn't much different from that of a human being, but... Something was different. Clearly so. The power emanating from it transcended that of any human. Or of any enemy I faced in getting here. An awesome power. It seems as if it vaporized anyone it touched swirls within my body almost against my will. Now then, I shall ask you once more. Answer me. Are you my master? Your words are few, but beautiful. I like that. I won't ask you how privileged you feel for summoning me. All right, I give my blessing. I will bestow upon you the honor of being my master. She takes a hold of my hand and helps me to my feet. From the hand she had grabbed comes a sudden warmth, and then a sharp pain like I'd been cut by a knife. On the back of my hand, as though tattooed, is a strange symbol that looks like some kind of crest. Totally confused, I alternate between staring at the mark on my hand and the person standing before me. And then... The noise behind me brings me back to my senses. Turning around, I see the effigy from before is still there, now in a fighting stance. I wince uncontrollably, recalling my previous defeat at its hands. What an excitable master I have. Why are you so flustered? While I am by your side, have no fear that you may lose your way. Remember that victory is all that matters. My blade is the ultimate instrument. Even the muses themselves would bow before the sound it makes. Master, strike with my sword. Show me the extent of your abilities in this first battle. Alright, now we can actually see what it does. Alright, so... Uh, guard, attack, break... Uh, attack, attack, attack. Yeah. 
Nice finish. And we leveled up, yay! The battered effigy stops moving. There's no way it'll still function after being effectively torn apart. That wasn't entertaining at all. Considering how long I've waited for such a moment, I truly am unsatisfied. She continues to talk. However, the sound of her voice doesn't quite reach my ears. The heat coming from the mark on my hand grew in intensity during the fight, and the resulting pain has become unbearable and burns through my consciousness. The mark imprinted on your hand is your command seal. It is proof that you hold dominion over a servant. You can use it to give three orders that must be obeyed. Think of them as disposable strengthening spells. It is also proof of your participation in the Holy Grail War. If you lose it for some reason, you will die. Once again, I hear that voice. I somehow manage to ignore the pain and listen to what it has to say. I can understand your confusion, but before I forget, congratulations. You have endured much to make it here. Now rest for a while. You've achieved your first goal. It was an incredibly clumsy effort, to say the least, but that's what made it all the more entertaining. I've had this duty for a long time, but this is the first time I've seen a master as helpless as you. Nevertheless, be proud of your achievement. Your quick thinking came as a result of nerves and rashness. Thinking about it, the voice sounds like that of a 30-year-old man. And it's really irritatingly smug. For some reason, I can see the owner of the voice as a priest, dressed in a somber cassock. Oh, you are curious about my identity? <laughs> I am honored, but I am insignificant. I am merely a part of the system. I am just a guide, tasked with giving a standard message, and given the personality of a prior participant. I am no more than words, no more than the mountain you just conquered, no more than a record of the past. A record? So if I raise any objections to this voice, does it mean I won't receive any answers in return? Exactly. Well, this is unexpected. You have received a commendation. Something about you having a light. I have no clue who would say such a thing about me. But that short phrase struck my heart because, for some unknown reason, I knew the words were sincere. And as for I expect good things from you, it seemed like more of a command than an encouragement. Now let us commence your baptism. You have proven yourself worthy of the honor. For most, the monotony of everyday life continues on without end. Your decision to look beyond the accepted and progress means you have earned the right to exist. However, you have but taken the first step. Be jubilant, young knight, for the Holy Grail War begins now. I have no idea what he's talking about. The Holy Grail War? The right to exist? That is correct. An object of great power once existed in the world. One that could grant any desire. People called it the Holy Grail and fought endlessly in an attempt to gain sole possession of it. This war, the system you find yourself in now, is an evolution of those struggles. You stand at the entrance of a deadly struggle where many magi will perish in pursuit of the Holy Grail. Listen, magi. Had I not bestowed upon the earth desire, you'd be merely saints capable of committing sin. Now fight to the death. The fiery throne of heaven will only receive those with the strongest of desires. The voice reverberates through this hidden chapel as if it were the voice of a god. Kill? Magi? Holy grail that grants wishes? These questions and more swirl inside my head and almost seem to carve themselves into my flesh. 
In war, a weapon is needed. That is your servant. They're the spear that pierces, the shield that protects. A legendary soul whose purpose is to clear your way to the grail. That is the one who stands beside you. And damn, she cute. I glance over at the young woman in red standing next to me, who is looking up into the sky. She is my servant. It seems you have decided, and with that decision as payment, I now open the gates to the Holy Grail War. The marks on my hand, my command seal, once again begin to become excruciatingly painful. It's over. I can't take it anymore. I reach the limits of my endurance and my mind starts to shut down. As I lose consciousness, I can vaguely hear the voice's final words. Now, let the Holy Grail War begin. No matter the era, deciding who is worthy through battle is the divine providence of man. Magi who have been invited here by the moon, show me your true strength. Uh, yeah, let's save. And let's save in a new data slot. <laughs> the mire of the everyday slows off. A war between magi. The wheel of fate turns. Weak one, temper your sword. And defend the value of your life. Rebel one, action! First week, combatants remaining 128. The locale jumps around a lot, I noticed. The sky burns. Houses collapse into ruin. People fall to the ground. Roads come to an end. The conflict started here. With this, the world that was will be restored. It is here that I alone had survived. Don't remember never forget. Oblivion is salvation and sin. Never forget. I was born from perdition. This must be a nightmare. This had to be somewhere. It could be anywhere. These events that occurred in the true memories of childhood. A torrent of blood flows and a voice resonating with bitter resentment can be heard. Lives fade away without a thought. Friends, family, strangers, all gone. Soldiers with guns, families trying to hold together. A grotesque struggle to the last until a gentle peace descends as death comes to claim them. I could not accept all I have seen. The question of why never left me. Even with the divide between conflict and catastrophe, why did such a tragedy occur? No, more importantly... Why has this world been turned into a hell on Earth? A gentle rain begins to fall. All things once living fade away, leaving only one behind. Amidst the helplessness and despair, their souls' last feelings are of rage and regret. The rain wets their cheeks as their eyes close one last time, dying forgotten and alone. Seeing this... I struggle to rise from the depths of death. I will not accept what I have been shown. If I can live again, I will definitely. But there are no second chances, and before long the rain has cleansed the scorched earth. Never forget. I was born from perdition. What that means... 
Somehow, please don't forget it. Seems I saw some sort of twisted, distorted dream. With that, I wake up in the nurse's office. I must have collapsed and was brought here. So was that world, the effigy that blocked my way, and that servant, all a dream as well? No. This nurse's office is far different than the one I knew. It's similar, but off somehow. So, you're finally awake. I guess there are no limits to your feebleness after all. Dare! While you were unconscious, I had naught to do but stare at you while I, you slept. Okay. Phrasing? The overwhelming, unforgettable presence of someone suddenly appears beside my bed. What I think to be a valiant young man garbed in crimson is, in fact, a young woman. But as this being is not human, any normal conclusion based on gender or looks would be moot. Hey, Karazul! <laughs> Kiyohime called. She wanted her job back. <laughs> But it's all for the best, as you have come to in time for the start of the Holy Grail War. Incidentally, you are fully aware of what the Holy Grail War entails, correct? Holy Grail War? I've heard mention of it, but what is it exactly? You know nothing of the Holy Grail War? And yet you somehow managed to become a master. Uh, while pitiful, ignorance is hardly a sin. I shall instruct you as I am able. Firstly, the Holy Grail is said to have held the blood of a savior and has the power to grant wishes. Holy Grail? That Holy Grail? It's the basis of an entire body of Western religious history. A holy relic said to perform miracles that became well known through the Arthurian cycle. The original has been lost to time, and all that remains are base counterfeits. But no matter. The Holy Grail for which you are fighting is a different object altogether. Early on, the Holy Grail War was the name given to the ceremony Magi held to gain the Grail. In truth, it was a bloody melee for which the sole survivor would be granted the Holy Grail. In simple terms, the tournament you're in now is an approximation of the original Holy Grail War. Now, new magi have emerged in a time in which Thaumaturgy, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, has all but faded away. Magi, magus. Although I can hardly believe that these words apply to me, it seems that others think of me as one. Whatever the case, it sounds like this Holy Grail War is a merciless fight for survival. Uh, you're hopeless. Here, to win this is to live, to lose is to die. There is only one way to avoid death. The rules are simple. Two magi are assigned to fight each other using their servants as weapons. The magus who loses to their opponent is stripped of both their command seals and their life. My eyes are drawn to my left hand where I've been marked with three strange symbols. You will face a series of battles before you reach the Holy Grail. The details really don't matter. There are a number of minor rules, but the most important one is... Win. Simple, is it not? I doubt it's that simple. While I have a million questions, at least I know the basics now. And whether I want to be here or not, I'm now a participant in this Holy Grail War nonsense. Indeed. 
As long as you understand the basics, that is enough for now. Now then, do you know what a servant is? Sorry, I don't have a clue. You know nothing of servants either? It seems that your ignorance is boundless. With an irritated expression, the servant before me continues to lecture me with subtle disdain. The servants are legendary souls called from the past to help masters win in the Holy Grail War. Only those whose deeds are acknowledged long after their deaths become legendary souls. The servants recreated here by the Holy Grail are drawn from those whose legends endure. The servants are basically soldiers, there to guide and protect the magus who summoned them. As per the rules of the original Holy Grail War, servants are divided into seven classes. Originally, the classes of legendary souls were hidden, but things have changed over time. Saber, Lancer, Archer, Rider. Uh, what were the others? Well, they aren't of any importance. Only the Saber class matters. <laughs> also, these classes identify core skills only. Replicating every single skill would be impossible. A legendary soul's main traits are aligned with the class and then given form. It'd be safe to assume that an enemy servant's class will give you clues about their powers. Furthermore, it is said that those of the Saber class are far superior to other servants. So then, allow me to test your knowledge. I'm sure you know which class I belong to, yes? <laughs> Saber? Rider? I don't know. Well, she was talking pretty high and mighty about being in the Saber class, so... Correct. As the Saber class is the best of the Servant classes, it's obvious that I'm a Saber. Yes, you have answered well. I can sense the promise and potential in you. Now then, from this time forward, you may refer to me as Saber. No honorifics are necessary. As you are my master, I will allow you to address me as an equal. Saber. Her personality is going to be difficult to deal with, but she's definitely a worthy ally. Wait, if all servants are legendary souls, I wonder who Saber was in real life. My true name? I have nothing embarrassing to conceal, and I'd be happy to tell you. Hmm, but it'd be a disaster if an enemy were to learn my true identity from you. But if my name were to be known, it wouldn't affect my resolve or my approach to battle. I will share my name once I have learned a little more about you. But I understand your unease at knowing nothing at all. Although I can't tell you my name, question not the truth of my words. And as for the Holy Grail... All I know is that it grants wishes and creates servants using famous figures from history. With you as Magus and I as the mightiest of the legendary souls by your side, the Holy Grail will be ours. For now, let that truth put your mind at ease. Allow my sword to clear away all of your doubts. With that, my servant disappears into the ether. However, I can feel their presence nearby. They must be staying out of sight when they're not needed so that their identity can't be compromised. But how their identity would be guessed just by their appearance is beyond me. Ah, Silver, you're finally awake? I'm so relieved. You don't seem to have any injuries, so feel free to leave when you feel like it. Also, all of your memories have been restored by the Seraph, so do not worry. Any magi that seek the Holy Grail have their memories suppressed and are given to those of the student. Only masters who manage to recover themselves are allowed to enter the main tournament. Now that you've regained your memories, please review them to make sure they're complete. Regain my memories? That's not right. Outside of my name, I can't recall anything of my past. I realized that everyone around me was forced to believe they were normal students. However, I cannot remember a single thing that happened to me before then. 
Your memory restoration failed? I cannot help you. I, Sakura Mato, am just a custodial AI. My complaints were totally ignored. It seems that she can't act beyond her programming. Oh, I should give this to you before I forget. Portable terminal. She gives me some kind of portable terminal. I assume it's for getting messages and whatnot. As a participant, you should pay attention to any messages that appear on your terminal. Ah, so now we have access to the menu. You can review the information you've gathered on your opponent by choosing the Matrix menu option. Uh, there's the equipment, items. Uh, check the system menu option to save your progress, load a game, or change various in-game settings. All right, does she say anything else? Have you met Father Kodomine yet? Good luck in the tournament. It will test your limits. Okay. Actually, I think this will be a good place to call it. So, uh... Let's go ahead and save. All right. Right. So, uh... Who are we going to raid? I know what we are going to raid with. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Josh or Ayumi. Oh, she changed her username to just Ayumi, not Ayumi or Nissan. <laughs> Let's see, who else do we have? Oh, actually, since this was a fate game that we were just playing, uh... Let's go ahead and raid the Chaldea Gurus. Actually, no, 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 no. Let's raid Superashi. All right, so we're going to go ahead and... Raid, uh... Hang on. We're gonna raid Subarashi Fox VA. And our raid message. Will be Uma. Given who we got, I believe that is a good raid message to use. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Carazul's like perfection. Uh... I'll see about streaming some more later this week and hopefully getting back to um, Four Job Fiesta. I mainly just did this particular kind of stream as like a change of pace. Uh, 
All right. Uh, I'll see you about streaming later this week. In the meantime, let's raid.